This episode is brought to you by Leo Master's Privacy Guard Security App. Hey, what's up everyone? It's Justin here and I'm in San Francisco right now. And it is April 6th, I believe. You guys are probably seeing this video the following week, but welcome to the Ask episode. And I thought I might as well do this episode based on travel as I'm traveling right now. Um, I'm here to record the iPhone SE review and also a what's in my bag episode and just kind of hang out in San Francisco. Um, haven't been back in a while, but without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the first question. The first question comes from Mitchell Saunders and he asks, what airline do you normally fly and have you ever had a weird and unusual moment during a flight on a plane? So with airlines, I really don't have a preference. Um, I don't really have any loyalty programs to any airline. I just hop on Expedia, book the cheapest and fastest flight. I'm usually pretty last minute about that too. And when it comes to weird and unusual moments, it would probably be the first time I had Wi-Fi on a plane. I know a lot of you guys in the US probably have internet and it's kind of a normal thing when you're flying domestic, but the first time I had Wi-Fi on the plane was my flight from Vancouver to LA in August of last year. And the weird and unusual moment was probably um, the first time I was able to connect and I thought it'd be funny to do a Periscope stream and FaceTime all my friends from 35,000 feet and definitely got some awkward looks, but it was my first time with Wi-Fi, so I was pretty fascinated by that. The next question comes from William and he asks, what tablet do you usually travel with and do you ever edit from like iPads or do you only religiously edit from the Mac? So I travel with an iPad mini 4. It's the only iPad I have owned. Um, I have switched between some iPad minis, but I've never actually owned a full size iPad. I use my iPads primarily for either watching videos and TV shows on the plane or to control my drone, which is currently at a repair facility. Um, but aside from that, I don't really use my iPad that much and I have no intention to do any editing on it. As for traveling on the go and how I edit, I have a maxed out MacBook 12 inch and the 15 inch Mac. It is a Retina Mac from 2013. Um, I purchased both of them used and they both get the job done. One of them is for note taking. One of them is to power one of my ultra wide displays at the office, but I haven't really edited on the go. For some reason, I like to just take the footage home and sit down and edit it there instead of rushing the edit on the go. But the computers are perfectly capable and I definitely prefer to edit on those compared to on a tablet, unless Apple introduces like Final Cut or Mac OS X on the iPad Pro, which probably won't happen. The next question comes from Eldo Jacob and he asks, which is a fav place and go-to phone while traveling? So I have kind of traveled around lately in the past six months, I would say. And before that, I really never traveled on my own unless it was like a family trip. Um, with university, it has given me much more time to travel around and LA has definitely been a place of preference. I've been there a few times in, I think twice in the past six months and I probably won't be going back there at least for another year as I have pretty much gone around most places, the key places in LA. Um, I'm in San Francisco right now and I kind of just decided to come over here as I haven't been back in I think a year and a half and it's a cool place and a lot of cool filming locations. The next places I plan to visit though are probably Chicago, New York, and Toronto. A lot of YouTubers and friends are out there. Um, it's just a little bit further to travel to. When it comes to my travel phone, I use the iPhone 6S with an Apple battery case as it has a really bad battery life and the camera on it is one of the best, but not exactly the best. So in my other pocket, I like to carry the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge as of now. But the main reason for using an iPhone is because all my friends are on iMessage and I just find the iPhone really reliable and trustable as a daily phone. So really nothing has changed when it comes to travel aside from a Samsung Galaxy S7 for photos in my other pocket. The next question comes from a name that I cannot pronounce and it is, how many days do you think you can go without your smartphone? Haha. Ha. As of now, I probably couldn't go many days without my smartphone. I'm always on Twitter, I'm always on my phone. Probably way too much. Um, one place that could keep me away from my smartphone though is definitely a cruise. When I was like 11 to 15, I went on I think three or four cruises and I really had no problem being disconnected from the internet or my smartphone. Obviously it's nice to have your phone to take some photos, but I found cruises a lot of fun and hopefully I'll live on one when I retire. But that's a place that could disconnect me from the internet completely for the most number of days in a row. 
Staying on the topic of internet, the next question is, is a 4G key taking part to your go-to travel setup? Answer to that is not really. I don't take a 4G hotspot with me. Um, I guess in Canada, I'm not as spoiled when it comes to having LTE and 4G accessible everywhere. So I pretty much just use a roaming plan where you pay $7 a day and you get to use your plan that you have back at home in America, for example. If I'm traveling anywhere outside of America, I tend to just buy like a one month plan as plans in Asia, for example, are much cheaper than if you were to get something in North America. The last question comes from Siraj and he asks, if you can only carry three items along with you when traveling, which ones would it be? That's a really hard question because I try to travel light, but I still end up with like three bags full of shit. And um, in this case for San Francisco, it's like a four day trip or even on a two day trip, the camera bag is like 30 pounds and my bag of my tripod and clothes that ends up being checked into the plane. That's like another 20 pounds. My backpack's another 15. If I only had to take three items though, which would be a huge challenge in terms of tech, I would definitely take the A6300 and I don't know if a lens counts as a piece of technology, but the 28 millimeter F2 lens is definitely going to make that cut. And obviously my smartphone and the third option will either be my computer or a battery pack. Most likely a battery pack though, as the battery life on the A6300 and the iPhone 6S is horrible. So hope that answers the question. But before we head out, let's take one last look at our sponsor. Leo Master's Privacy Guard security app offers privacy scan to detect mobile privacy status with a simple click. It also offers an advanced set of anti-theft features with break and alert along with Wi-Fi security options as well. In addition to that, with AppLock, you're also able to select certain apps on your smartphone to be privacy locked, and in general, gives you the ability to ensure that your personal information is protected. Be sure to check the link in the description section to learn more. Other than that, this has been a pretty long ask episode and thank you for sending me all of your questions. And if I didn't have a chance to answer it in this episode, be sure to tweet me using the hashtag AskJTech. And this has just been an ask episode from my hotel room in San Francisco and I'll see you all in the next video.